You're listening to Boosh Radio. Boosh. Boosh. Boosh Radio. Your real talk radio. State Affairs with Edmondo Bilo is live. Professor Banjo, so you then made up your mind to fight a butcher. What was the first thing you did? I knew I had to educate myself on military power. I knew I had to understand how dictators think because I realized I'm going to be fighting a dictator. You see, if you want to fight somebody, you want to know how he thinks, not how you expect him to think, not how you think he should think, but how he actually thinks. Then you can outthink him. So I studied dictators. How did you study them? I you were reading about, books? Yes, I read, I read about Castro. I read about uh, Hitler. I read about... Uh, um, did you read about Che Guevara? Che Guevara, yeah. I even read the, the book, the two books on the on Cuban Revolution and then the kind of guerrilla, conduct of guerrilla um, war. Did you study the Vietnam War? I, of course, I was in America during the, the Vietnam War, so I knew quite a lot about it already, you know. And I studied about In fact, one of the person who spoke to me, whom I spoke to, who educated me a lot, was a guy who came to Philadelphia. He was a, he was a major in Vietnam, during the Vietnamese War. He has, he's about 45, but he had no, no peace. Right from the very age of about seven, he used to lie in the paddies, rice paddies underwater, and spy on Americans going through. He, he fought he was, for Ho Chi Minh. He was with Ho Chi Minh. He has fought all his life, so he knew about. So I spoke to people like that, you know. Did you pay him? No. He gave you everything free of charge? Yes, yeah, the people are willing. When, you, when they see that you are a sincere fighter for freedom, that you want to fight, they are willing to help you. People are willing to help you. It's only in this country that we think more everybody, money, money, money. Mm-mm. You also Nothing. got an American consultant, right? No. I didn't get any American consultant. But I just spoke to people, a, a lot of people in various areas that I know would help. I don't want to mention that aspect at all because uh, a, a, a lot of things happen, you know. Mm-hmm. While you were studying for mm. your guerrilla war, mm. did you consult Nigerian politicians, some of them who were no, in exile at the time? That would be dangerous to do. Never did. But I tried to organize among us Nigerians who felt... The, you know, especially Southerners, mostly Yoruba, who felt the same way I felt. But you see, and we, we were to build a core army of just 50. I mean, Castro started with 98. They were ambushed in the Syria maestra when, because they have been betrayed. They slaughtered all of them. Only seven survived with, with his brother, who is now the current mm, president. Raul. Raul, Che Guevara, and then for that person, I don't remember their names now. I but learned some Nigerians you brought together had yeah. to abandon they you. They do abandon us very much. They abandon us. When you talked about weapons. I'm training, yes. They, they were still okay. Say, oh, they will come. I say, okay, individually let us buy our own weapons for training so that you get used to it. In Great Army, your own weapon is your survivor. One by one, they give reasons. It means their dedication is not complete. They talk about it, and that's what is happening in this country. Everybody talks about what is going on, about corruption. Everybody, even the people who are corrupted themselves, the people who are stealing their money, looting the nation, they talk about it. But nobody, everybody keeps quiet, or they do nothing. Hmm? 
in some countries. <laughs> what is happening now cannot be happening. The people will have risen up. Cannot be. See what is happening in, uh, in Brazil. Not long ago, they, they removed their, what, their, their president. president. She did not steal money. She didn't steal any money. There was no money in offshore account. They traced that, nothing. They didn't. But because she diverted money into some economic area, it was obvious. All the money could be accounted for. They said that was uh, a crime. I told them, I told somebody that if you do come to Nigeria and see what is going on. I learned you decided to invest your life savings yes. on your guerrilla war. Yes. Mm -hmm. You started buying weapons. We started buying weapons. Before then, before we started buying weapons, I read also, I educated myself about types of weapons that were in, that were in existence. What type of weapon? Because you, guerrilla we, weapon is specific. You wanted to assassinate people. But in a guerrilla warfare, you have to at times. Did you have names in your list? I wouldn't tell you that, but that what? <laughs> but certainly you were going to bring Abacha down. We were going to bring Abacha down, yes. He's the number one person we were fighting against. So you collected enough weapons? We collected enough weapons. In the United States? Yes. How come the CIA did not know? I wouldn't want to tell you how did why did, I wouldn't want to tell you about that one. The FBI did not track you. They did not know. Or no. they supported you? No, no, no. You will want to tell the a lot of people don't even know the the, for, the foreign policy of this of Western powers in Nigeria. So for somebody like me to tell them that's the end of me, they will they will clamp me in the deepest part of their jail. No, but Bill Bl Clinton had to intervene when you were arrested in Benin Republic. Apparently, they must have, because Abacha, Abacha paid Shoglu, according to information that reached us, mm. hundred million dollars to to send up back. Where did you buy your weapons in the United States? From shops? <laughs> we, we bought them in. Uh, in there are a lot of international. Weapons market in US, they hold them all over this, all over US, you know. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell you how, because some other groups may want to do that. If I tell you all these things, I believe this country that, except we change, and I hope Buari is on the right path. I hope he's sincere. Corruption is the cancer of our society. The cancer. And no, can, no nation, no body, no body tissue can survive in the presence of a, a cancerous in a, a body. How were you able to move your containers out of the United States? I won't tell you that one. <laughs> Did you bribe FBI, CIA no, agents? No, 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 no. They didn't no. check the container? They, 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 no, 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 no. But I won't tell you You how had we did such high-caliber weapons, yeah, and the United States government didn't know? No, we, we, I'm not going to tell we did it. But one thing I want you to know, where there's a will, there is always a way. You must have spent a lot of money. Yes. Did you get money from any other person? I won't ask her to answer that question. Why? <laughs> Why? Because we must protect, I must protect those people. You were a transformed being while you were doing all this, right? Yes. I, you, you have to be transformed. I was transformed from my... But you see, the knowledge I had, academic knowledge, and more than that, I had more. You see, in Makere too, while I was in Makere, during the holidays, I used to do a lot of crazy things, you might call it. I used to, I bought a scooter and I used to travel all around East African countries, even meeting some uh, those people who were fighting. You know, there was a lot of guerrilla activity yeah. there. We are meeting those people. You've always been a revolutionary. Perhaps you kept it quiet. I never thought that I was. I was a scientist. If you ask me, I had a vision. My vision was to become a medical doctor, a scientist, and a researcher. And I, I excel in it. I broke the. I broke the university record. I did my PhD in one year. With courses now, PhD with courses, in one year, 10 months, and three weeks. 
Obviously, you, you, you yeah. come from a very brilliant family, and no doubt. My, my PhD was published as was taken up by the American academic community. It was read all over the, the place and it was copyrighted. It went to the copyright office. They suggested that, that this is a, it should be published as a book, not in little, little journals, so that people can get to, because I made a lot of discoveries. And it was copyrighted in 1970 and published in November 1975. It was regarded as being worth, I can show you a copy of it. It was regarded as being worth at least 18 original research papers with discoveries. You were going mm. to so water was, down these achievements with a gorilla instinct? No, I won't say it. Gorilla activity does not water it down. Look, for instance, a common man on the street cannot organize guerrilla warfare or a revolution. Look at all the revolutions in history, which I read. Cuban Revolution, Dr. Castro, hmm? Dr. Castro, his brother, Che Guevara, they were all highly educated people. Dr. Castro had a PhD in law. He was a university lecturer. Museveni was educated. Franco was educated. General Franco in Spain, hmm, who ruled for 30 years, but he was a patriot, not like Abacha. He was a patriot, a true patriot. Hmm. They were all educated. Didan Kimati, you've heard of Didan Kimati? Yeah. Didan yeah. Kimati is the one who founded the Mau Mau in Kenya, not, in, not Kenyatta. He was the one who founded Mau Mau in Kenya. He was the one who led the Kenya. He was the headmaster. Didan Kimati, the British captured him and, and executed him. He was an educated headmaster, highly educated. Mm-hmm. So it's only educated people, knowledgeable people, who can bring a change, who can cause a change. Because you must know what changes you want. You must know how to get about it. You must know the risk. You must know what it takes. And you are the one who is likely to get the funding or have the funding for such an enterprise. By the time your mm. container landed in Bini, yes, who were those your people that informed you By that you needed to pay some amount of money? Oh, but we had to, you know, <laughs> like I'm good to have a power of, you want to get a, something, you have to bribe people, you have to, but besides, we wanted to, you can, you see, there's an ECOWAS law. Things in transit through ECOWAS countries cannot be open by the arrival port. It must be escorted by the custom officers through that country to the border of the country it is going to. But still, you have to pay the port people. You have to bribe them. So you paid a lot of bribe? Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. And you were not there when the container landed? We were not there when the container We didn't even know until, until almost a whole month. You were already in Nigeria? We were already in Nigeria. We waiting Nigeria. for your consignment? Yes, waiting for it, yes. Professor Adeshegu Banjo is my guest. Was it that your mm-hmm. consignment mm-hmm. were not well packaged? The reason it the gender well men packaged. there saw it? It was well packaged. So how did they see the gun? They didn't, what happened was we wanted to bring the container off out of the port. We bribed them to allow us to carry the container out of the port. On the morning we were to carry that container, the representative or the owners of the container they were in, uh, no, in, in Norway or something, Norwegian, is it Copenhagen? I can't remember now. They told their representatives, I was there in a phone call, they told their representatives that Nigerians, when they take containers to, from Bini, they don't return it. That I should deposit $5,000 there before taking the container out. $5,000, it's not something, I don't carry such money around. Mm. Mm. So we decided to offload into a lorry. And unfortunately, the one person I got to assist us happens to be an agent, a security agent, dressed as a porter. 
and he saw the bot just not even the yes he saw the wood you know guns are assembled in a in a in in a, in a well shaped uh, in a wood in a stock he saw the stock of the weapon of an SKS and he managed without my knowledge he managed to smuggle it give it to another agent who came near the con the container and um, suddenly the 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 swoop on us you, you came with your wife yes but why did you go there with her that day oh i came with lots of people to help us to offload how many continents i won't tell you that <laughs> i won't answer that question and that was how you were arrested yes yes they found the they took the container and examined it throughout the night. And they saw magical weapons. And they saw weapons, yes. Weapons they didn't have. They didn't have. They didn't even know about it. In fact, it was my wife who was telling them certain things which army officers were supposed to know. They so your know wife had it. the detail? Yes, yes. She why, knows. why did you involve her? You know, let me tell you something. In the guerrilla army, you don't write things down. You need an assistant you can t trust. If at least almost absolutely. People, people, people can sell out for money easily. Not only for money, some pressures. Some people can withstand pressures. Even amongst, among, my, among some of my colleagues, there is a limit to the trust I put on each and every one of them. You trusted your wife most? Most, yes. And you were sure she wasn't going to betray you? I know she wasn't going to betray me. And she paid the price with you? Yes. She went to prison with me. I would say one person out of 10 million would not have gone to prison with me. Because they asked her to leave, to go away. She, she was said, even ready to pay the price? She said no, and she wrote a statement that implicated herself. That was... Unique. She did that? Yes. Why didn't you advise her to go? I advised her. She said, with two of us, it is better with her that way. In fact, at one time, she suggested that I should let her take the responsibility for that alone. That if she should take the responsibility that with me outside, I can fight for her release. Now, for her being outside. But then we finally decided that it is better that we are two. Because if they have to kill, kill they have to kill two people, isn't it? Mm. With me alone, they can, they can kill me easily. We they try to. Your wife must be a strong woman. She is. A revolutionary yeah. too. Yes. She hated Abacha too. Yes. Who does not hate Abacha? I think everybody hates Abacha. Your wife is an evil woman, as yes. I know. Yes, yes. My second wife, my first wife had died. Okay. Mm, she's an evil woman, yes. How many months did you spend in detention in Benin Republic? 14 months. You were eventually released? <laughs> yes, we were eventually released, yes. Abacha wanted you by all means. Very much so. How come Benin Republic did not release you to Abacha? I would say that a foreign power intervened on our behalf and told Shoglu not to send us. This foreign power is the United States of America? I will not confirm that. President Bill Clinton? I will not confirm that. He <laughs> called Shoglu and told Shoglu not to release yeah, you to yeah, Abacha. That, that is the information that, I, that came to us that a, a, a powerful head of state and head, another head of state as informed Shoglu not to send us back. Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Bush, Bush, Bush. Bush Radio. Your Real Talk Radio.